amazing show by Buck, who everybody knows, I hope. With an exclamation point. With an exclamation point. <laughs> we are Mark, a mark, not a point. <laughs> we are really excited to uh, have this conversation um, and talk about this body of work that Buck has um, created. So we're just going to get into it, and there'll be time for question and answer, and there'll also be time uh, afterwards for you to continue to look at the work. All the work is still for sale, so you definitely can speak to me or Buck about that. Uh, and also on your seat, there are two postcards, one small card and a larger card. Um, the small card has a QR code on the back of it, which connects to, uh, it's like a business card, it's black. Um, which actually will take you to the video of um, Buck's interviews with different people discussing the concept of freedom. And if you have had an opportunity to go upstairs, there's a small TV in the back room um, with a, the video of his interview looping. And so through that QR code, you can actually see the full interviews. Also around the gallery, you'll see QR codes like that. Uh, if you're interested in pricing and all of that, or you can just speak to either one of us. So, why don't we get started? Um, and we already have a very active <laughs> participant ready to ask, ask questions. Also, the three questions on the card. So take those three questions in. And so that should be like, that should set the tone for the evening. <laughs> so at any point, like, I mean, I know it's like I know we're gonna do our thing, but if you want to interject with any of with any of those, with answers for those questions, because it's like and it's like there are there is no correct answer. So the idea is for us all to uh, to dialogue and to continue to talk about this thing, like and then at one at some point, like you know, not everybody's gonna get interviewed, but I would like to interview as many y'all as possible about this concept of like what freedom is and what what you feel like every day. So. What's your, what's your feeling? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let's get started. Um, so obviously the show is called This Don't Feel Like Freedom. And that title kind of came naturally to us, so just in a conversation that we had. But in talking about freedom, what about the concept of freedom inspired you for this body of work? I mean, I think we all have different definitions of freedom. And I think, you know, I think trying to have, I have a wide variety of friends, as we all know. And so within that wide variety of friends, conversations I have, and I like to have these dialogues with all of y'all. And, you know, sometimes it can be, I can be cantankerous, I can be just silly, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy having these dialogues with y'all, getting to the point where I can have a dialogue with y'all where we're, like, talking about something that you don't feel necessarily comfortable talking about all the time. You don't want to talk about, like, West. Wes is in the studio with me every day, and so I'm like, I just berate him with like all kind of like, yo, so what about freedom makes you feel uncomfortable, brother? He's like, just leave me alone. But he's like, <laughs> he doesn't say that, but we kind of keep it going. It's like, I'm just always thinking about these different concepts, and like, you know, you encounter so many different people in your daily life. I don't know about you, but I do. Uh, I just encounter so many different people, and it's like, yo, how are they getting along today? Why do they feel so good today? Why don't they feel so good today? You know what I'm saying? And just try to make sure, like, I don't know, man. I think this idea, like, you just want people to be happy. and You know what I mean? Like, we're not always happy. But you want, you want people to be happy. And you want to see that they feel free. They feel good about themselves. They feel like they can move and, you know, see the world. Whatever, whatever it is. So, I mean, it's not necessarily freedom with regard to legalities. No. I mean, it could be, but no, no, but that's not, I'm not, like, yeah. I'm not worried about your legal status as far as if you're running from the cops, right? Now, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, like, I don't want to know, so. Yeah, right, know. right. But I mean, you draw a lot of your inspiration from music and reading. I mean, yeah. you're, you're a bookworm, as we know. I mean, what were some of the things that you came across in your readings that spoke to you? I mean, I think it's, <laughs> But, I mean, it's just, everybody has a different concept of it. Everybody's looking for a different thing. You know what I'm saying? It goes from like, you know, you got like, like Albert Camus is like on some old like, if, you know, if you're not free, then you're dying. And it's like, that's suicide. You're like, well, that's a little too much. That might be a little too much for me. But you know what I'm saying? And you're like, um, and so T. 
he just brought back my um the, the denial of death, and I'm like, wow. So Ernest Becker has this whole thing about like what freedom is and what that looks like, and it's like so you get these different definitions, and you're collecting these definitions, and so the, the, it should in reading or listening or whatever it is you do, it should be that you can uncover your meaning for what freedom is. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be that you're taking away anybody else's meaning of freedom. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to take away anybody else's freedom in order for you to get free. You know what I mean? And if you do, then that's, you know, that's but the most humane thing you can do. That's probably the absolute opposite of what's happening in society today. Yeah. So I think, you know, the taking away who is, who is the person giving and taking away and I think maybe what you're talking about is more on a personal level of, you know, do you consider yourself free? Well, no, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be personal. It can be bigger than personal. It can be, I mean, within, within the social realm. I think what happens now, you know, and I've talked to you, you guys about the same thing, and I've, I've been saying it, like, um, I call it individual fashion. So fashion exists. We know fashion exists. We, we know that people, certain people run for office and they have certain ideas in mind that you may you may either be voting for or voting against that don't speak to you, speak necessarily to freedom yeah. and what you think of freedom. But I think what's been happening in social media and whatever, and I would say the internet, somebody's like, you old because you call it the internet. And I'm like, huh? the internet. <laughs> it's still the internet. But it's like this idea of like, you. Like we're choosing echo chambers and we're choosing groups to follow and we're deciding to be like, yo, I don't like so-and-so and I don't want them to have such and such. And it's like a it's a it's a still a it's still a version of, of fascism. You're still participating in fascist ideas and ideologies, and you're not really open, you're not really aware of it. Because it feels so good to have 20 people tell you the same thing, like, yo, I hate so-and-so. Yeah, motherfucker, I hate that motherfucker too. This one, I mean, that's what, look, that's what it looks like. I'm saying, is the baby still in here? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, but, but people are falling into these categories where they're very comfortable with yeah. hate. And if you're comfortable with hate, when it comes back to you, what does that feel like? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, these, so it's, 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 it's like fascist vacuum holes, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, echo chambers of like, you know, and you see everybody doing it. Everybody yeah. can pick a group any day. Any day you can go on, you can go on social media right now. And I always talk about people like, but it's not real. But it is real. Because half the motherfuckers are on there doing it. Yeah. You know, you're on there being like, I hate so-and-so. I hate, I hate so-and-so today. Or you can and cannot or cannot do something, right? right yeah. And I think the conversation that we had about these surfboard pieces, so yeah. Escape from Freedom, part one, part two. But do. 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 I'll bet you. Um, so, <laughs> I really love the discussion that we had about this work um, when, you know, you were telling me about the inspiration behind it, if you could share that story. Um, because that's where we get into, well, who, who's to say this boy could be surfing? Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah so, yeah, so I think it was weird because some people, like, they didn't know he was on a surfboard. I'm like, well, that's kind of he's on a surfboard. He doesn't mm -hmm. Right. If you missed that. Discussion. But I think it gets into the idea of like, I have a fascination with like surfing and, um, hey Tori, somebody's at the door behind you. Tori, somebody's at the door behind you. Do you surf? No, so here's the crazy part. I haven't surfed yet. Steve surfs. Uh, so I haven't, but it, that's like a thing, like I want to surf, I, like I, I want to surf and feel like, I also have a fear of being like that far out in the water with a surfboard, you know what I'm saying, I don't, I don't have a fear of swimming in deep water, I have a fear of being on a surfboard for some reason in deep water, I don't know what it is, I'll get over that later on, at some point, hopefully, uh, but the idea came from like, I have this affinity for like watching like uh, documentaries on surfing and like, you know, people being in the water, all these, like, you know what I'm saying, like all those documentaries that come on, actually put you to sleep. They're very good for, for rest. Um, so it's crazy. So it's like the idea of surfing is that people see surfing and think they're just free. You think someone, you know, they're just he's so free. But the idea of it is this dude has to stay on the board. To stay on the board means that you have to be always aware of what you're doing, right? And there are moments when you are totally, but this is like life. Life is about you staying on top of the surface. Well, he's also tethered to the board. Well, he's also tethered to the board, but that's, but you're tethered to something, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's <laughs> right. how life works. So, right. But so, I think what we were talking about specifically was, 
this is a black kid, right? And because I think you were inspired by a Brazilian child? No, so that actually, so the, the original photo is the South, this kid in South Africa on the surfboard. You know what I'm saying? It's like wild that it's like, I don't know if y'all been to South Africa, but like South Africa is, is wild itself. And the fact is like, you know, apartheid ends in 1996, and everybody's very much aware of it. Like, if you go to South Africa and you're like, yo, uh, you know, when did apartheid end, everybody said the same thing. And it's like, you get on like, you get on a tour bus, and they're like, they'll tell you about Johannesburg, and how Johannesburg is laid out, and how the British did such and such, and the Dutch did such and such, and then the break out in the middle would be like, and then in 1996, the people got free. And you're like, wow, that is, but it's like very honest. There's an honesty to it. And what it is, you know what I'm saying? And within that, there's an honesty to like seeing a, a kid on a surfboard that nobody believes is supposed to be on a surfboard, but he's been surfing his whole life. Or like Brazilian surfers that like are of color or, you know, indigenous surfers that have been surfing for their whole life. Right. And, 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 but it's all to say, you know, like whoever it is, whoever you are, wherever you are, right. you know what I'm saying? Like but that's, I guess that, that sociopolitical, these guards that we put up, you know, especially from the perspective of America, you know, in, if you were to ask, you know, most people walking the streets of DC, they wouldn't automatically say, oh, well, yeah, that kind of man can surf. You know, that's not associated with blackness. And it's, it's you're, all, you're, all, you're also kind of jailing in your mind and, right. and what you believe right. to so, be possible. So we should, but it's the idea of changing everybody's lens. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, and, and, and when we say, like, I'm not just saying, like, you should just see black kids surf. You see everybody doing everything. Everybody. Right. Like, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if, I don't know. I don't really care about Caitlin Clark, but if you're mad at Caitlin Clark, that's your problem. She can shoot the <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so we should be open to seeing. It's, it's just, it's about the ability to open up and see y'all. Like, yeah. get free. Because everything else is a chain. Everything else is, is keeping you from being where you want to be and where you want to go. And that doesn't mean that you also don't have to be very like aware of, uh, of you know inequities, but also understand that like some of these inequities that you're helping keeping them in place. So are the works that you have in this body of work here? Is that your freedom? No, <laughs> that ain't freedom. I mean, it's freedom. It's a free. It's freedom. In the, it's a free. It's freedom. At some point, yeah, but it's also you do the work, you know, you do the work, the work, it, the work to get, the work is work. But you don't find that free of your mind. Oh, I mean, no. all of, it's it's stressful. Oh. If you're in a studio at three in the morning, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you're getting out all these ideas onto the canvas. You're getting them out, but but okay. So, a couple of conversations that we had on the video was like, what is free? What does freedom feel like? And freedom is like that moment. Like there's a moment where you feel like. The moment where you're present and aware, and to stay present and aware at that, you can't maintain that. So it's the balance. So do I feel free sometimes when I'm working? Right. Yeah, but then right. most of the time you're like, yo, it's yeah. In our studio, it's a thousand degrees, Wesley Clark, <laughs> landlord. Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? It's a thousand degrees. You're sweating. It's three o'clock in the morning, trying to figure out you want to drive back to DC from where you know right. from, from College Park. And you've been drinking half the night, you know what I'm saying? But you've been working your ass off. But it's, that's not necessarily a feeling of freedom. Right. You know, as artists, you know, the idea is that we're so free. No, we have to keep schedule. We have discipline. We have to yeah. stay working. Have to that, but working. that's a point that a lot of people don't understand. No. Because they really do associate artistry and art, you know, with this freedom that, oh, you guys wake up whenever you want to. You do whatever. And it really, it's not. It's, I mean, I get to wake up later than most the folks. Average. But then... And you're up until three. Yeah. Right, right. And you're like, yo, how are we gonna make sure that these bills get paid too? Cause right. Because we, we just bought extra cans for no reason. 20, right. 20 cans of paint that cost thirty dollars a pop that we couldn't afford in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But it's fun. That, but that part is like, yeah. But that is, but in, in that moment, it's free. When you're like, oh yeah, I just bought that shit. But then it's like, oh, okay. so then, yeah. so it's like trying to maintain that different that distance between like, you know, that suffering and. No, it's, it's a balance, though. It's a balance, man. So let's continue with that thought line as far as balance, because in so many of these works, they're so layered. 
there's so there's so much packed in, and I mean we can even just use this work as an example behind us. I remember seeing this work before it was finished, yeah. and it did not look like this. <laughs> and the layers between the figures, the language, the background, yeah. the, you know, this balance. I find it extremely interesting to think about the process, and I wanted you to talk a little bit more about your thought process and the, and the physical process of creating some of these. Uh, so it's more, I mean, I'm starting to get more to understand the idea, and all the artists always say now, like, mark making. So I'm getting more mark making and just kind of, like, putting shit down on the camps and then figuring out after that, like, like, I don't, besides maybe him, like, I'm not going into the pieces anymore thinking that I already have an answer. Like, I don't have, like, I'm not like, yo, this is going to look like such and such. It's like, let's see where it goes. So then you end up, so you get one layer of paint, and you're like, yo, this is cool, and it's like, ah, that's whack. Then it's like the next layer, and it's like, ah. Then you keep going, so it's like a back and forth until you finally feel like there's something there. Yeah. And that you're comfortable. So you will, like, so, so sometimes it is like I'm doing, like, a lot of, I don't know if it's extra painting, but you know, there's a lot of painting. There's a lot of painting. There's, there's a lot of going yeah. back and forth. There's a lot of. I mean, there's words that are written over there. Words where I'm like, you know, I could be three weeks in and be like, yo, this is yeah, this is the greatest thing ever, and I wrote this. Or, and then like two weeks later, like you got to cross this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what, what is that for you? I mean, is it, is it a constant strive to whatever it is? end goal is, I don't I, I don't want to say perfection, but it's uh, to your, you know, how do you know when it's done? No, just, uh, Jabari, another artist friend of ours, came he's like, yo, it's very, it's, it's a narrative, you're doing a narrative. And I was yeah. like, yeah. I never thought about it that way, so it's interesting to have that conversation and be like, yeah, I guess it is, I guess I'm writing a story, and you don't know, right. you're, not just, you're not done with the story until you finish the story, right? So whatever that is, I'm writing, it's yeah. not, not until I get to the end where I'm like, okay. That makes sense. So it's really more like what makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I know I'm trying to. I know some of the stuff looks wonky, and you know, with men, some of us are looking at it like I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm like, I get it. So it's like when I get the program, like I get it. Yeah. And I feel comfortable. But that's the thing too. You get it. Yeah. But what is your expectation for the viewer? Because I mean, I don't have an expectation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, the so, that's so it's trying to lose the expectation. I mean, besides me, like one y'all. Like it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I want you to like it. I don't have expectations of you. Like I don't want you to be like I'm not ask I'm not telling you that this is exactly what this is. Now I do have if you ask me my explanation of the piece, yeah. But you're gonna see what you're gonna see anyway. And I'm not here to I'm not here to sit here and give me that with you all day long. But if they don't necessarily get the narrative that you painted it with yeah. and you got is there an emotion that you want to project? Not an emotion, no. I mean, there's several emotions in all of them. Yeah. Um, I'm just as crazy as all the rest of y'all. So we're going to go Maybe back and forth. Yeah, yeah, but we're going to go back and forth. And it should be back and forth. You should find a place where you're like, oh, I feel this. This is, I felt that. And another yeah. place where you don't feel that, and that's fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is not propaganda. But I think you know a lot of people who view art <laughs> expect that the artist is, in a way, telling them what to do, think, feel, you know, and, and so I think but the point is, is well taken that you're not. You but know, that's so. propaganda. Mm -hmm. And and are you, and it's, and it's like pop culture propaganda. Okay. And it's the, that's, that's the worst form of it. Like, cause are, I mean, are you an artist or are you a tool? You know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? Like, and so we've talked, and that's how we came up with the title. If you go back to how we came up with the title, that, you know what I'm saying? This don't feel like freedom because this idea of you, you're going to put this message out, you're going to tell everybody that this is what it is. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, right. if that becomes something that, that becomes something else. That's pop culture, yo. You're, 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 that's some fetish shit. You're doing what everybody else is doing. Don't do that shit. Do you think we're living in a... Uh, in a I'm sorry, young man. <laughs> I was about to say, the young people here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But do you think... I'm always intrigued by the other world worldliness of your compositions. Yeah. Has that always been the case with your work? Or did you start out in a more I think it's starting to come back in my work and it's not necessarily other world, it's just like you find it's like a it's like a game for me, like you find this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like um, a word search? 
Yeah. Well, maybe, yeah, like an object yeah. search. So, yeah. like, uh, I was telling somebody the other day, I always tell the same story, the same story over and over again. I had a buddy growing up, Steven. Steven was like, he could, like, literally, but like, we're like 12, 13, he's drawing, like, Marvel comics. And I'm sitting there, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, my, I wasn't drawing stick figures, but my joints wasn't looking that fly. So, I was like, y'all was gonna take the newspaper and then draw afros on people and draw glass on them and find stuff. So, then you're finding different items, and then okay. when I see things, I don't see. You know, kind of the conversation that was had. I don't, you know, you're taking me into a tool shop and I see toys. Like it looks like Star Wars to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's not Afrofuturism. It's because I see weird objects within that. You know, the way my lens works. You know what I mean? So it's just. You take good. offense to Afrofuturism? Yeah, I do. Because people. Oh, labels. No, just labels. It's, it's not. I don't have a problem with Afrofuturism itself. It's more like self like. Uh, you easy. don't want your work to I don't, be. I don't, I, no, I, just want, I don't want an easy label. Okay. Who wants an easy label? You such and such. No, why? Do you, what, what do you want to be called? I mean, what what, what do you want to be say. called? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no, I don't want to be called things that may not be what but I. I think you have to admit that your perspective about the world, society, how people view each other, is a little different. It is, but it's supposed to be. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> so. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I hope, I hope, I hope that I do not have the same perspective that y'all have. Well, you know what right. like, like that's almost dis, it's almost disrespectful for us to be like if we all thought alike, then this would be. But that pointless. goes back to what you're saying about social media yeah. and everybody being on the same bandwagon yeah. and, and, and not realizing that they're living in this, yeah. you know, fake world. You yeah. know, exactly. So find the space. Speaking of Star Wars, yes. <laughs> talk to us about the surfboard. Oh, so the, uh, I don't know, man. We can talk about the surfer. So there, there's a surfer that's missing. He didn't make it. There's a, <laughs> there's a sculpture that was made that looked like that young man who somehow, somehow in the studio, his foot ended up connected to his head <laughs> and something else. And he didn't get blown out. But uh, the idea is, I mean, that surfboard itself is like just taking pieces of, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know much about, like, Electric, electrical, electric, electric product, electronics. That, uh, that's the word. Electronics. electronics. But I do like the gold. Like the circuit boards are cool to me. Like they look like you know when Star when you watch the Star Wars, how they like flying in between and stuff. And if you look at like the Star Destroyer, they got all those different pieces on it. So that's what it looked like to me. So then I was like, yo, I gotta order some minifigures offline. The Lego minifigures, and those Star Wars minifigures. Add to that joint, and there's a turntable on it, and it's just like I don't know, man. I was having fun. But this is your first installation piece, is that right? I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. I think it is. But it's somewhat autobiographical, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and then the, um, yeah, and then there's the um, there's the Jameson bottles that you know, thank, <laughs> thanks to my community, they were collected. <laughs> um, several different bars uh, were a part of this collection. Um, so, Even the, I mean, the DJ equipment, the yeah, but it's like, yeah. Tricks, all of it. All of it is just, I mean, it's things that, you know, I mean, it really is, it, autobiography might be the right word, but it's very like, yo, know, stuff I've been a part of. Right. You know, right. and to get those bottles, I had to end up taking a shot, like half the, um, so like when I, when I went to pick up the bottles, they'd be like, yo, you gotta take a shot. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> it was a rough, that was a rough, <laughs> that's a rough month. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, and then the turntable, like, yeah, like, uh, you know, you know, kind of like a ode to DJs and also to like music and also like, because that's part of it, like, right. you know what I'm saying? And, and the like, warrior, yeah. The warrior. Oh yeah, the little warrior. Fun is for that. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a little Buddha. Yeah. In the middle, and then there's a Yoda in the corner because they're basically the same. I've never seen the Yoda. That's hilarious. Yoda's in the far corner. I've never seen the Yoda. Yeah, so yo, I mean, because you know, Star Wars basically took the idea of Buddha, like, just right? Like, like it's like green, green, green. So, so, kind of jumping back to this discussion about freedom, at what point did you decide that you wanted to incorporate other like, the ideas of other people, you know, in doing the the video? And what how did that affect the work that you did? Uh, so, I mean. I, I don't know. Again, that was the part of like the dialogue. Just I always have different. Like I'm always like, I don't know. Some people say I like to create little 
conflicts and talking to people. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm jabbing you because I want to see where your head is at. Because I want to see, you know what I'm saying? Do I want to hang out with you? What are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we really talking about here? And are we going to talk? Yeah. Right? And so, I mean, and so what happened was, I mean, we're talking, I don't know, the show was going to open at like three, I think we were about three weeks out. Three weeks, yes. And I ended up reading this article. It's 4 a.m. and I'm like, yo, something ain't, it ain't, the complete gel ain't there yet. And I find this article called um, Unfreedom by this cat, um, Yaren uh, Homes. Um And so he's an associate professor at Bard. Yeah. Yeah, so I end up like getting in touch with him. And it's, the article's called Unfreedom. It literally was like, exactly what you were talking about. Verbatim what I was talking about, these concepts and these ideas of like, we're here, we know we're free, but we don't feel free. And it's like this irritation that a lot of us have. And I'm I'm doing a terrible job paraphrasing this beautiful article, but it's like this, this idea like we're here, we're free, but you don't really feel like you're free. And there are things that aren't working out, and there's things that don't work, but you're still here, so you guys still have these opportunities. And now I'm kind of pushing into my own lane. But so he's he is the I think on the on the way the video, the way the uh, things where the video is set up upstairs. He's the second interview. Um, and so that was cool. So I got a chance to talk to him and interview him. Like, we did a Zoom chat. And it was like, yeah. And I was like, I was I was so excited. I'm like, I keep saying, like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because I really want him to know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, son, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, okay. it's okay. It's okay. And so, um, but it was like this thing of, like, get to the point where it's like, um, you want to talk to people. Like, I, I really do, like, the three questions are like, if y'all want to text me or you want to call me and talk about those three questions, like, because they're very basic. Like, are you free? Yeah. Can you describe freedom? You know what I'm saying? What is, you know? Were you, surprised? Were you surprised when you found that article that somebody was really having the same thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but, it was yeah. like, but also it was 4 a.m. and I was like, Even real. So then you text me. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, that was, and so, like, I mean, I think that was an important part of being like, yo, like, oh, this is, and it's, it's interesting, like, I've ended up having these conversations, and I don't know it's because if you're already conscious of something that you will constantly hear it, but I've had these conversations over like the last three weeks with people in spaces where it had nothing to do with art. You know what I'm saying? Like, People talking about freedom and what it looks like, or talking about Joe Biden. Not talking about Joe Biden, but it, you know, maybe that started the conversation. Yeah. But then we started having these whole con uh, whole conversations about what does freedom feel like? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, you know. But I think that's the beauty of art as a bridge, right? Because it's, I tell people all the time that artists are some of the smartest people that I know. Because instead yeah. of, <laughs> stop yes. it, don't get, don't, no, don't get too excited, guys. Yes. <laughs> but I think because instead of writing a paper, you're kind of intaking all of this information, right? Mm -hmm. And then translating it, it comes out on campus or in installation, in whatever your practice is. And that to me, it, and then you also, in that translation process, you put your, your own, you know, tag on it, your own style of painting, your own, you know. But to to be able to process information in that way, it is it's brilliant, I think, personally. Again, don't get your head too big. Yes. <laughs> but, but I also want to talk about language. Where does your practice and use of language in your works come from? Oh, I'm a graphic designer, I'm not sure. That's amazing. <laughs> I just, I just gotta I say that. Really you gotta really know it does, though. Like, I've been, I've been a graphic designer since 93, 92, 93. Right. So that's like, so you're looking at words constantly all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to figure out how to make things fit and work, and you have to read it. I, you, I've read stuff that I, don't, I will never want to read ever again. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You know, union papers from like yeah, I don't know, some association where you're like, this is the spoon association. They, they make silverware and like, yeah, whatever one. You know what I'm saying? So like, so you learn how to you're moving language around. You're trying to figure out how words work. You have to, so it's just very basic. How do they work in your work in your paintings? How, how are they? So, how are they supposed to? I guess how do you marry the visual? Oh uh, I man, with I, the verbiage. It, it's, it's texture. Words are texture. You know what I'm saying? Like at a certain point, 
do you even see? It's like you see the page, you see the words, do they matter? Do they, at certain points they matter, certain words matter. The whole paragraph may not matter to you, the whole page may not matter to you, maybe one paragraph that's important to you. So you use it, so it becomes textual because you start crossing out, circling, you know, deleting completely, you know what I'm saying, without losing, you know, um, the structure of it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Structure. Structure. So it's just, and it helps, it helps, it does help build the page. Well, I mean, it also speaks to the composition of the work. Yeah. Because. Well, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's how you build it, but that's how you can build a composition. You can, you can keep building on top of, right? You know what I'm saying? So you need to take up some space right now. You need to hide something. You need to move something. And then you need to say something stupid. And then you need to say something really smart. Right. You know what I mean? Like, all those things matter. So. Yeah. How do you see this body of work? Continuing on. I mean, it's the same story. So my work is, at, at this point, there's a line. There's a line in my work. Like I'm having the same conversations. So I'm continuing, not the same exact conversation, but I'm continuing the conversation. The conversation is growing. It's changing, and it's like it's evolving. You know what I'm saying? So it's really like it's no different than who I am. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I've known some of y'all a very long time, and a few have known only a few years. But if you talk to me, I'm talking about the same stuff. It may it evolves, but it's not like. So is this yeah. topic, this topic of freedom going to be, continue to be a topic that you riff on, that you it may be evolve? Like, yeah, it may be like, how do we, how do we get into space? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, freedom in space, babe. But it should be like, it won't, it's, it's, it's on and on. You know? yeah. So, yeah, and I think, I mean, freedom is a baseline. So, I think it's needed. I think it's needed in today's society. I think it's, to think about how we approach ourselves, how we approach others, Especially right now, I and I can't help but put a political bent on it because I think we're in such a horrible place as humans. <laughs> so that's my opinion. But yes, yeah, so, okay. So there's nothing wrong with saying that part, but it's also the other part is like, yeah, it's as as, as as again as unfree as a lot of us feel and as yeah. burdened as a lot of us feel. I can do just about anything you want in the world right now. Like. You can literally do it through your phone. You can book a flight right now out of this bitch if you want to. You know what I'm saying? So it's this balance of both. Like it's this ongoing balance of feeling the burden. Yeah. You know, but this like yeah. what you're describing is like, and, and you're not wrong for saying that. Like I don't disagree with that. But also like, in order for me to wake up in the morning, I have to be like, yo, also like I can get, get out of here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I can go get me a coffee and a, and a drink at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I got to do. So it's just, it's the ongoing, again, yeah. it's the balance of the two. Like. Is, is there should there be a political bent at certain points? Yeah, but is it just that? No, no absolutely not. It's definitely not just yeah. that. I want to talk a little bit more about relationships. Okay. And how personal relationships affect this particular body of work. Because for those of you, I want you to take some time after our talk to look at a couple of these works. Like you can see this dude screaming for this female figure. And you know, what, how does that? How do personal relationships affect your work? And they, there's little gems here and there. And I mean, like I'm an angsty dude, man. So you know, whatever I'm going through, what I'm feeling at that moment. Yeah. You know, you'll get that too. Like you're supposed to get that. But that's trying to be as honest in the work as possible. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be honest in my process as you as possible. Like yo, what I'm feeling that day. What I'm mad about that day. Who I'm not happy with. What I'm going through with yeah. this person, or you know how I'm feeling about past relationships or rejections. I think sometimes you know it's more more literal than you know other artists. You know, uh, I mean, present it because. But that's you know, but it's not. Is it literal? Or just I mean, yeah, I guess it is literal. It's honest. You know, people. some people splatter red paint, like you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm more so like. I mean, I ain't gonna spell out shit. I'm like. What do you do in moments like that when you're just not feeling the work or you're not feeling like painting anymore in the moment? Do you ever get there? Yeah, we always get there. I don't know, just sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to like watch TV. I don't want to binge watch 20,000 shows when I'm not painting, you know what I'm saying? And then, and I'm, I mean, I'm reading, but I'm also binge watching like everything on TV. You can ask me about TV shows. Yeah, I don't know. I'll act like I don't, but I'll be watching the hell out of What are you watching right now? Uh, the Boys, uh, Game of Thrones, yeah. uh, about 
or five other shows. <laughs> you name it, you can pull them up and be like, yeah. And I'd be like, I ain't watching nothing. I'll tell you I ain't watching nothing, but I'm watching like five different series. Because I feel like everything you do, fuck, influences your work. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're just absorbing. Well, absorbing, yeah, absorbing. Yeah, Game of Thrones has not influenced anything. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They put no dragons on that. Might be. Oh, that is actually a dragon. <laughs> I was going to say. But no, that was, okay, I will say this. Uh, that was me looking at like Japanese paintings and then wanting to have like a dip, so very little bit of like that, kind of like that dragon. Kind of like, anyway, so yeah. So yeah, everything. But no, but no Game of Thrones. Ain't no like Cersei is not in the paintings. Okay. If anybody knew that reference was. So what's next for Buck? Yeah, some drinks and some food, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it. That's no, it. No, that's it. I mean, you know. Are you working on anything new? No. You want to take a break? No. But like, West Coast, you have to come back to school. Yeah. <laughs> right. He said, I want to see you. About time, the least going to be up. So, I mean, probably, I feel like I can start painting again. We've been, this has been a month and a half. And yeah. it's been like, it's work. Yeah. And I needed a little bit of a break from actual painting. So we'll start painting this week. You know, we're okay. good to go. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for giving us some insight into that crazy break of yours. We leave. Thanks, uh, y'all, for listening. Mm-hmm.